And I want to talk about a little bit about dying and, and cancer and disease. And then Newton will wrap up brilliantly, making us laugh a lot. And um, I, I, I was in the break, and I was speaking to someone who also had cancer. And this guy comes to me and he says, you know what? My father died of cancer. Now, that's, that's probably the wrong way to address people who are suffering the disease. And I, I, I will speak very briefly, five minutes, about key rules that I think you all should learn about how to handle and deal with people with the disease. I had a lung cancer three years ago. I removed half of my lung, my left lung. I did some chemotherapy. Then I was healed. I was okay, I was cured. And then this, this January, I, I, I had cancer again. I had a lot of different nodules in my left lung. I'm a non-smoker. I had three here, one there, one there, one there. And uh, I'm going through chemotherapy again. And, and um, why, 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 why did I decide to go ahead with this talk? Because things are looking good. Um, the therapy seems to be working. And there are little things um, I've, 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 I've started to notice in my daily life that shows how beautiful life can be, and again, how you can make from tripas curação. And for instance, one of the little things that changes a lot when the results from fighting the disease are going okay, and you should never be too, too optimistic about it, right? Because this is a very long fight. I'm not sick. Um, this is a war, right? I have to live with the disease probably for a very long time. But I've started to notice very little changes in my daily life, and I, I would like to share some of these, and then I will go back to the rules of how you guys should handle the people with, uh, with the disease. For instance, one of the things I've noticed is my alarm clock, right? So one of the first changes when you're fighting and you're winning your battle against the disease is that when the alarm clock rings at 6 o'clock in the morning, you are all happy. And, 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 and I mean, you have to imagine why. Another thing is, well, you could, you, when, when you're invited by your mother-in-law to go to dinner to her house, you feel power enough to say no. You say, you know, I, I, I do not want to go. Because your life, your life extension is bigger, is larger, and so you have, you have the option and, and, and the possibility to say no. That's, that's another little change in my life. Um, another thing is, uh, well, you start using your toothbrush to wash your teeth instead of combing your hair. And that's, that's also a very good thing. Another thing um, is when the doctor talks to you about cholesterol, you hear him. And, 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 and there are all these sorts of positive things that you see in life. And, uh, and the last one I would say is, well, you start to use your visa more than the parking pass from the hospital. And so things are looking good. But let me go back to the three or four rules that I think you should, you should listen. First, you should never be, tell bad stories about people who die from the disease, okay? If I would start this talk by saying I'm dying, well, I would probably have extracted some tears from you, from you guys, right? But the thing is that I could also have started by saying you are all dying. And that would also be true, because we are all dying. Second thing, you actually never die in six weeks. We have some diseases, some cancers, some small cell cancers are very bad, and they kill you very quickly, but 98% of cancers will not take your life in six weeks. So whenever you hear that story, don't spread it around, because it's probably not true. It's people trying to ask for a little bit of drama to their lives, a little bit of self pityness but it's not true. Now, one thing that is very interesting is that people tend to be very helpful when they address people with cancer. And so the first time I posted on Facebook my, the, the fight I was having with the disease, I get like 700 or 800 messages of people with proposals to solve the problem. Now, another different thing is one of the things that changes when you're winning the disease, when you're winning the fight against the disease, is that you don't want to hear anymore that it's all a matter of attitude. It's not a matter of attitude. When you have cancer, you need pills, substances, you need treatment. It's not 
definitely a matter of attitude. You will not solve the cancer problem, the lung cancer, with attitude. You need, you need stuff to do it. So, whenever you have a suggestion to do, please don't send it in a blank email or on an SMS. Now, typical mistake that people do. Do you know about the Cuban vaccine? Yes, I know about the Cuban vaccine. Now, if you're trying to motivate me by saying that there is a new cure somewhere in the world that I might test, then please help me to get there. Because otherwise, you're just creating fake expectations. You're creating a, 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 a possibility scenario that I will not be able to, to have access to. So, if you ever want to send someone a suggestion of, do you know about the Cuban vaccine, you should say, speak with Dr. Rodriguez in the Cuban Medical Services. This is the email. This is the phone number. My brother already tried the vaccine March this year, and it worked. And you have his phone number here. Don't send bicarbonate, lemon, quantum physics, quantum medicine, biomedicine, Hare Krishna, Reiki, projected Reiki. Don't make any suggestions if you don't have quantitative, qualitative, scientific, and contact information. One last thing would be, don't never be, well, try to surround yourself. This is for patients. Try to surround yourself with positive people, right? You don't want doomsayers. You don't want people reminding you that lung cancer life expectation is 15%. You don't want to do that. Because you, we, all, we all know that we will die. We all know that the medicine today helps us having a very, a pretty much regular life. My, I, I, there are not many changes I made in my life in, in these last three years, I think. I keep on traveling, I keep on teaching, I keep on managing my businesses, I keep on part-time, thank you Norberto, you know, hosting TEDx Oporto and several other conferences. But the thing is, the most important trick when fighting the disease is, I might lose the war against the disease, right? I might lose this war. Because it's, you know, I have my tanks and my armies and my medicines and my pills. And, you know, cancer is, is a tricky bastard because it multiplies, it changes, it adapts. And so it's, a, it's an interesting conflict here. But, so the, the issue is not about if I'll die or not. That's not the issue. So whenever you're talking to someone with cancer, that should never be an issue to you. Each one you might ask, you know, do you think you'll die? And of course, the answer is yes. Yes, I think I'll die. But I don't know if I'll die next year, in two years, in five years, or 10 years' time. And most of the patients will not know this. Will not know that. We don't know. So if we don't know, and we have to manage this uncertainty, you shouldn't remind them about probabilities, about chances, about, about lifespans. You shouldn't remember them. The trick, the, the most important secret for, for me when handling my disease, is I don't give a shit if I win or lose the battle against cancer. What I will know, what I know now, is that the disease will never beat me. That's the trick of life. That's the trick of surviving cancer. And I will not change my daily routines. I will not change, change the people I love, the, the, the things I choose to do, the things I eat, the places I visit, my, my trips with Peter worldwide, I will not change my life. Of course, this you might say, yeah, but well, what if you have me alone and you're tired and you cannot travel? Yes, but if you've, if you, you've seen the, the film in, in, in Touchables, right? All sufferance is relative. Yes, my cancer is probably a good cancer and there are some worse forms of cancer. Yes, my cancer is painless. Another thing that most people do not know, Mo some cancers are painless. I, I don't feel any pain. I feel fine. I think I look fine also. So, but, 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 but some cancers are, are very painful, like the bladder cancer. But I will, not, I will not give in to the disease, and I will not change my life. And that's how you beat the disease. Beating cancer is not about winning the final battle. It's about making the best of your life if you have to pass until the day you pass. That's the trick. So, 
going back to some rules, please, when handling people with cancer. First, don't tell them about your father who died of cancer. Don't do that. They know that. They don't need to be reminded of that. We all know about statistics. We all know about our life chances. So don't remind them. Second, don't make any suggestions for treatment unless you have the full information. Don't, don't bring the Cuban vaccine or the dendritic cells or the proton projection in, in, in the Anderson Cancer Center in Utah or Texas or whatever. Don't do that. If you want to help, work on the solution, create as much information as possible, get the scientific background. Actually, what you can do is you book the, 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 the consultation with the doctor. You call the hospital. You call the Cuban med Medical Services and you say, you know, can I, can, I, can I get this injection? That's how you should do. Fourth, it's not about living or dying. In the end, we will be dust. It's all about not being beaten by the disease. And um, I had a great time. Thank you very much.